Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Teal Talks. My name is Chris and I use she, her pronouns. And my name is Holly. I also use she, her pronouns. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about how to build a support system. And we thought this was a good topic to cover just as we kind of transition into this awkward stage of navigating the pandemic where we've all been in isolation for a little bit of time and things are kind of starting to change and shift, but obviously with some barriers still in place. So there are people who are being cautious. There's still some social distancing out there. And I think it's important just to remember that everybody is at different places and that that is okay. But we wanted to share some tips on how to build a support system and what that would look like. Sure. And in discussing building a support system, we want to start with talking about the basics of meeting people and kind of starting from how do we even build supports. And so our first suggestion is to kind of embrace what you're interested in and what your likes are. So that might be looking for groups or events that might be related to your interests. That could be Facebook groups, that could be um, hiking groups in your area, or just like local events that are going on that might be socially distanced, but involve things that you're really interested in. I know around us right now, there's a lot of craft fairs going on. So if that's something you're interested in, that might be a really good place for you to go and meet people or um, just kind of anything that could be going on that you're interested in where people will share your mutual interests. Similarly, if you are interested in working out or exercising, going to the gym might be a good place to meet people. If you have a strong faith, you could go to the church, um, joining a hiking club, going to a dog park, and kind of various volunteer opportunities are also places that you could meet people people that have similar passions, interests, and values. So another suggestion is to practice being vulnerable and authentic. And I know that's kind of a scary word and a scary thing to think about for a lot of people, but being vulnerable isn't a bad thing and being authentic is very important. So being open to sharing pieces of ourselves with other people, that doesn't necessarily mean that we have to share super, super vulnerable things like a past trauma, uh, but just being open to our experiences, to the things that we like, to the things that we're interested in, or maybe to the things that we're not. Uh, and being genuinely, genuinely, my goodness, I can say that word, <laughs> genuinely who we are will help us to build and foster those positive support systems with people we really do connect with on values, beliefs, um, common interests, etc. that we have. So it's super important to practice being vulnerable and do those in small doses, practice it even with the close friends you may already have, and be a little more comfortable with it so that we can build those genuine relationships and be more genuine when we're trying to meet new people. Yeah. And with our supports that we're building, the way that we can kind of foster those relationships and deepen those relationships is the way that we relate to those people and interact with the individuals that are in our system. And so one way that we can do that is by asking for help. And I know that there can be a lot of shame or embarrassment that comes with asking for help or reaching out to the people that we love or that are in our support system. But it can be really important and really helpful in deepening those relationships to reach out to the people that love and support you when you need it too and you need to be supported that's the whole purpose of having a support system so making sure that when you need that extra support that extra talk that maybe advice sometimes that listening ear that you do that reaching out that you express that vulnerability that chris talked about so on the side of the same wavelength as that, sharing successes is really important and celebrating those successes with the people in your support system, whether it's their success or your success, but sharing those things, celebrating them together and just kind of supporting each other through that can be really helpful. So making sure we're there for both the ups and the downs is an important part of a support system. Checking in with people can be super important too. You know, in one of our previous videos, we talked a little bit about how to check in with people, um, but that's a good thing to reference. So if you are not sure how to do that, go back and watch our video on that. But checking in with people around you and your family or your existing support systems can be a helpful way just to say like, hey, I'm here and can really contribute to some of the other things we talked about with vulnerability and shame. Um, if we're making the effort to do those things and we're checking in rather than someone reaching out. So that can be an important thing to practice too. 
Definitely. And lastly, some other ways that you can connect with people may be online resources. So Facebook groups or virtual meetings might be a good way to connect with people. And we want to kind of emphasize when using those virtual groups or meetings that online safety is really, really important. I know that in April, we had a lot of <laughs> series or videos around building online safe spaces. And so just as Chris mentioned, maybe checking out our previous videos around safety and internet safety, that would be a great idea. But when we talk about reaching people online, we want to make sure that you are maintaining your comfortability, your consent, and sometimes your confidentiality, and making sure that sometimes it's really important to utilize groups that are from well-known agencies and organizations so that people are kind of vetted and, and those spaces are safe as well. But again, it's all about breaching connections and making those supports as well. So as long as you are being safe and the people around you are being safe too, it's really important to be able to build those supports. And like Holly said, there's definitely some very broad groups and then some that are a little bit more narrow. So like if I go on Facebook and type in dog lovers, that could be all over the place. But if I type a specific dog park in the area, that might be a little bit more restricted to people who are actually visiting that location. It might be an easy way to kind of get connected. So um, definitely practice safety though in those spaces and hopefully some of these tips have been helpful to kind of get people started on building a support system. If you have a counselor, you can always talk to them or even a therapist to give you some tips on how that looks to you or how to do that. A lot of agencies in the area run groups, um, ours included, so keep an eye out on Facebook or other social media sites or even postings on bulletin boards and different places you might go that would post information like that if you're interested in doing some of those things. So thank you for watching and we will see you all next time.